Hi, this is Olaf, and this is probably the most interesting e-mountain bike that I've ever tested. A big thank you once again to Sweden's largest e-bike store, Elcykelkompaniet in Gothenburg, and Trek Sweden for providing with this amazing bike. It's not easy to find interesting bikes to review when my channel is so small, but Trek is one company that has been very supportive. Now this is the Trek E-Caliber 9.9 and this is the first E-mountain bike that is made for the Lycra pajamas people. So it's a lightweight cross-country bike and it's got a low-powered 55Nm Fasua motor down there. It's an Italian brand uh, which is really interesting. And what's unique about that motor is that you can remove both the motor and the battery as well. And that means that you will have two bikes in one because if you remove that battery and that motor pack you will essentially have a lightweight analog cross-country bike. And another unique thing about this bike is the rear suspension. And it's a very tiny little suspension, but together with these seat stays in carbon fiber, this forms a very interesting rear suspension. So this whole part is one piece, and the only pivot there is, is down here near the bottom bracket. And back here it's actually fixed. So what happens is when the shock is moving, the seat stays actually flexes, which you can see here. And these seat stays look worryingly thin and fragile. Let's see if we can break them. I didn't think a mere 60mm rear suspension would even work that well. But the ride was even better than with the 100mm rear suspension that we had on a Canyon cross country bike. So of course this bike is made entirely out of carbon fiber. It weighs under 16 kilos, somewhere around there. So there's carbon here, there's carbon here, there's carbon here, carbon here, carbon here, carbon there, carbon here. The grips are made out of a soft spongy material, which are very nice and I think they are there because of the carbon handlebars and the carbon wheels to take the vibrations, those small micro vibrations out of the equation. And the real question is who this bike is for, because I think if you add a motor to a cross-country racer, that is definitely considered cheating in the cross-country community. And even though this bike is slacker than the Super Caliber, which this bike is based on, it's still not a proper trail bike, even though we had it uh, on a few downhill runs this weekend. I'm running out of time, every day goes by so fast. And every our first test ride takes place in Sweden's newest bike destination, Bike Park Ulricehamn. There are only four lines open for this first season, and it's more about enduro than family-friendly flowy trails. As usual, it's steeper than it looks on camera, but totally rideable with a cross-country bike. Sort of. Jumps and big hits is not for this bike, however, and the lack of a dropper is annoying to say the least. I think the brakes are okay. And the geometry too, actually, but uh, I think it's the tires that's holding this bike back. I don't dare to push any corners. But there are places where this bike makes sense too. When I lived in Spain, I did a lot of cross-country biking to explore my new country. Mostly, I was riding on asphalt, gravel roads, and often roads ended up in something very rough, making cross-country mountain bike the obvious all-round choice. I often went for longer rides, and I greatly enjoyed the few times I got my hands on an e-mountain bike, so that I can go further, explore more villages, and have more coffee. Here is where the Trek E-Caliber would have been the absolutely perfect companion. And this Fasua motor is a real gem. It sits down here in this sort of unit, which together with this bottom bracket forms the complete electrical drive unit. It's a very smooth motor. They say it's 55 Nm meter after this black pepper upgrade. But we compared this motor with the Bosch Gen 2 motor that has 75 Nm meters at peak power or peak torque. But I'm not entirely sure that this motor has 55 Nm meters because I had some trouble keeping up with that uh, Bosch Gen 2 motor, I can tell you. But that doesn't matter that much to me, because on this lightweight mountain bike, this Fasua motor is enough. On the flats and when the surface is smooth, this is a very fast bike. 
There's hardly any noticeable drag over the cutoff limit at 25 km per hour. The tires are fast rolling too, so overtaking a full fat e-mountain bike with sticky tires is not that difficult. But as soon as we start climbing, it's a different story. The previous second generation Bosch motor absolutely killed the Fazua on the climbs. But the Fazua is very smooth, stealthy and fits this bike perfectly. Okay, time for a race. It's me on a 55 Nm bike and it's uh, my brother on a 75 Nm bike and uh, Wilmer at the uh, analog bike. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good! So, Wilmer and I, first place, the trick 75 Nm, last. Yes, I won't bore you too much with the component specs. This is the XTR version with Shimano XTR parts all over. There's also a SRAM version, which is 1000 euro more than this bike, but that also contains the AXS electrical shifter, the wireless shifter. I know that everyone raves about these gears, this drivetrain. I don't see its greatness as much as other people do. I think they work fine, but they are a little bit clunky. And uh, all of the SRAM equivalents that I've tested feels a lot smoother. Then there's a matter of durability, of course. And there I think Shimano has an advantage. So that's also a factor to consider, of course. Oh, there's a lot of roots. I want to drop her. I need a dropper. An hour ago we went in a downhill track and uh, yeah, this bike did that pretty well actually. It's just the tires, they're not that grippy. But here, uh, this is a proper cross country track and uh, I think this is the proper playground for this bike. And. Uh, yeah, it really helps with this motor, of course, in the climbs, it goes on the flats too, it's pretty technical this, and uh, the speed isn't that high, so we never reach that cutoff limit at 25 km per hour, so right here, it's perfect with this bike, lovely trail this, brakes are excellent, XTR brakes, I don't know the rotor size, but uh, it's definitely enough for this bike. Unfortunately, you need a key to remove the battery and the motor and you need to remove the battery in order to charge it too. We just turn the key, pull this lever and there you go. So this whole unit contains both the motor and the battery and now that bike weighs around 10 kilos, which is a lot less of course and uh, makes this a uh, proper cross-country racer without a motor. And if you need to switch the battery to a spare battery, that's a very easy process too. Just push this button, pull this battery out and put a new battery in and then put this back and this motor connects to a small little connector here let me show you and there's also an electric connector for the electric parts putting it back is very easy too you only need to align the bottom part here to the bottom bracket open this lever push it in the front suspension is pretty interesting too actually because this is the first time i see the fox 34 step cast version which is a lightweight fork and that is equipped with a Fit4 damper and Kashima coating. And I've never felt the 120 mm fork that plush before. So it's a really, really nice fork. Yeah, and the tires, 
I don't know, they're cross-country tires, not very well suited for downhill trails, but I guess they're fast rolling at least. Never buy a bike without a dropper, that's my advice. Here are three annoying things with the Trek E caliber. I get it that a dropper puts weight on a bike, but I must have lowered the saddle a hundred times over the course of this test weekend. Barely noticeable, but the power delivery was a bit uneven in some situations, as if the motor had a hard time figuring out how much assist it should provide with. A price of around 13,500 euros cannot go unnoticed. Here are three good things with the Trek E caliber. I wish this motor could be found on many more e mountain bike models. It's such a neat little package, very smooth and very quiet. This bike is a great companion for epic escapes. I had the perfect seating position for long and efficient rides. The range with the 250 watt hour battery is of course limited, but if the battery has depleted, there's no effort at all to pedal it back home. All in all, I think this is a very interesting prospect and I would really like to see this Fasua motor on other Trek models. I think this is a niche bike, not for the masses. And I really would like to have seen the Fasua motor on a Trek Fuel EX, for instance. Maybe that combination would have been more versatile. But once again, I really like this concept. If you don't want to have a motor on one of your runs, just remove it and you have a cross-country bike.